Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk to you about uh, specifically index card RPG and um, the Mass Effect game that we're running. And this is my report of actual table play for my Sunday game. Um, the dungeon, the yeah, I would say the dungeon master for this index card RPG. You don't think you could dungeon master other tabletop role playing games? Check in the check the video in the. Uh, check uh, check my video below. You can Dungeon Master games that aren't Dungeons and Dragons. All right. So the Dungeon Master for this Index Card RPG Mass Effect game is Gabriel. Okay. Now Gabriel is a is a die in the wool. He's our most mechanical player. Right. Uh, he's the best of our mechanical player. They're the person who's behind him, our most dedicated uh, player, um, Edward. Uh, he is um, a close, he's very close, he's mechanically, but I really feel that Gabriel is just a little better at mechanics in all games, right? He's a very mechanical player. Uh, he does have um, incredible spikes of narrative, and he can tell a strong narrative story. One of the things that proved this to me strongest was his running of uh, Ten Candles, which I was absolutely stunned at the, the, the strength of his narrative, right? Um, but this is Season 2, Episode 2 of um, Index Card RPG Mass Effect game. My character is Christoph Kor, okay? Christoph Kor is, a, he is a human infiltrator, okay? Uh, he is the captain of the SS Midway, um, and that ship is exactly the same type, and you know, it's the same size and shape as the SS Normandy, right? So, um, so I'm very excited to be captain. One of the things, and I'm just going to give you a highlight of the game this week. I was just, I, I was so excited to do this. Um, so I pulled down my Klingon. So I absolutely love uh, Modiphius's um, Star Trek tabletop role playing game. But I, I have so many books that I've never been able to get to the table just because I have, you know, I got more. I, I got ideas are like grains of sand on a beach for me. I got a million idea game, you know. A, game ideas. Like, I can literally just look at the cover of game and, you know, I'll have three three campaigns I want to run. So, I never even get close. So, I own the Modiphius uh, Klingon um, tabletop, freestanding tabletop role-playing game, which I absolutely love and never had a chance to run. And one of the things that's really exciting is I got to pull that book down and what I did was I went in and I saw the command structure on a Klingon ship and I actually wrote all the different groups down, right, you know, like engineering and tactical and command and I named every commander on the SS Midway so I have a crew now now get, you know what I can tell you something that was funny was uh, one of our in the game in season you know season two episode two one of one of the um, one of the people one of my crew was injured right and needed to go to medical but I didn't have a named medical officer and the reason why is the Klingon ships don't have medical officers <laughs> Because they're like, oh, you, you got bleeding, you're bleeding, and you're ravaged, you're probably going to die. And uh, that's glorious. Who cares if you die, actually? You don't care. So I had to, like, add a medical officer because my my, uh, my my department list was from a, a Klingon warship, which was, but it was really cool. And so, uh, you know, and one of the things that I really love about Gabriel's game is I'm, like, there's so much to do, right? Like, so I'm kind of building out my ship, and I'm building out my my own personal combat abilities and I am connected to N7 and uh, like you know this week I spent uh, time during the game right writing a uh, an operations path of, of how I can expand my abilities and you know and it is really really awesome I'm really absolutely loving this game I have a Prima guide a Prima video game guide which has just been invaluable right? Because we just pass it around the table and people, and people are like, well, I'm this class. I'm like, I'm an adept, but I don't really know what that means. And I'm like, well, here's seven pages about the adept. Skip all the detail on each one and just read the sentence that describes your power. And within five minutes, you know, somebody at the table knows what their class can do, right? And then they're going to be able to say, hey, uh, you know, uh, and then when they choose their actions to the dungeon master, Gabriel, they can say, hey, you know, this is what I want to, you know, this is what I want to do, right? And and it, it fits the narrative of their class and of their race, right? And there are also descriptions of what the races do. We're going to talk about the races. Uh, I, we'll, we'll talk, that's a, that's a subject for a little later, is the races within Mass Effect. Okay, so let me tell you the, the actual events. What happened in 
season two, episode two of um, Mass Effect, our ICRPG Mass Effect game. Well, here's what happens. So basically, we're at the Citadel now. The Cit- okay. So my character is a human, and I am I am I am part of the Alliance. The Alliance is all the human planets allied together. The Citadel is where the Salarians, the Asari, and the I think it's the Torians, right? They're all they're all allied with the Alliance, but the Citadel is like all the good guy races who are assisting the humans, right? Which I know that's a little bit um, like it's more nuanced than that, but I'm building my knowledge of the Mass Effect world, and that's one thing I'm really fascinated by is like this invitation that we have from you know from the from the the dungeon master to say hey you know, why don't you, you know, uh, it, to explore the, the Mass Effect world, even though I've never played the video game, right? And it, it's really a powerfully effective. So here's what happens, right? So I, my name, my guy's name is Christoph Gore. The, one of the other player characters is Gunderbad. Gunderbad is, um, he is a Krogan, okay? Uh, and he's, he's a Krogan soldier, okay? And then in addition to that, we have Kofi, who is a Drell vanguard okay mostly biotics mostly almost like jedi powers so basically just so you're aware um there are these things called biotics biotics um only i think only the asari can use biotics naturally and think of it as like psychic power and the ability to do jedi mind tricks you know and jedi force manipulation all those kind of things happen with biotics but all the other races other than asari need to be need, need to be physically changed so they have to have chips put into them and they have to literally upgrade themselves in order to do these these things, right? So, um, so a Kofi is a, a Drell Vanguard, and then last it is uh, hold on, uh, yeah, Tick Tick, and Tick Tick is a Solarian adept, okay? And so, so we now I'm going to tell you something. I really struggle to see like. I know what I am as a human. I definitely know what a Krogan is, right? But the reality is, the difference between a Solarian, a, a Torian, and a and a Quarry, a, a Torian, and a Solarian, I really don't see the functional value of all these races in uh, Mass Effect at this point. It, it hasn't erupted enough in the game for like. There's so many races, and you're like, well, this race is like this other race. But you're like, well, what do they do? Like, how are they different? One of the things I, I realized is the Sari don't have any males. That's functionally different, right? But, like, the Salarian, what's the difference between a Salarian and a Torian? I don't know, right? Like, and so that's one thing where I'm hoping that, you know, both the, the Dungeon Master will do a better job of differentiating them. But it's, it, it's quite possible that he can't because it's not really a, a, a valid difference in the in the game. Like, if you were going to add a new race, it should do something functionally different perfect example of this is, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, you have a dwarf and you have an elf. Elves are like, hey, let's make sure, preserve, let's make sure a single leaf doesn't fall from this forest, right? Dwarves are like, hey, let's go down in this mountain and carve it, carve the freaking heart out of it, right? Like, they are functionally different, right? And so I think that's one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed with the, the overall Mass Effect world is their, their races, they have a bunch of races, but there's no functional need for them. Right, so that I have recognized. So here's what we had to do. In uh, here's here's the event we had to do. So the so there's this thing called a genophage. The genophage is this. It's like a plague that swept across the universe. It was super deadly, right? And one of the things it did is it made it so that the krogan. It actually, I think, the genophage was made to make it so the krogans could no longer breed, right? And so basically, the so our job was to go from the Citadel, so the SS Midway, my ship, is at the Citadel, okay? We are given a joint command from the Citadel and from the Alliance to go and bring Krogan females from a Salarian planet who actually are allied to the Citadel and to the Alliance and go pick up Krogan females who were kidnapped by the Salarians and used in experimentation to cure the genophage, right? So, so this gets weird. You're like, okay, wait, they, you know, the Salarians kidnapped Krogan females? Yes. That's horrible. That's like a war crime, right? 
At the same time, what was the reason for it? Well, they're going to experiment so that they could cure the genophage so that the Krogans can, 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 can return to mating, which would be very good for the Krogans, right? The Krogans want that, right? So why wouldn't the Salarians just go and, like, say, and you know the reason, because the Krogans would, even though the Salarians have the tech to actually cure the genophage at some point, far more than the Krogans do, the Krogans would never trust them. So that's one of the reasons. It's, it's not a good reason. I'm just saying it's one of the reasons they did it. It's not a justification. It's just one of the reasons they chose to do it, right? So we are sent to pick up these Krogan females and safely escort them from the Solarian planet back to the Citadel. So we go and we actually, uh, we actually bring with us Erdin Rex, the leader of the Krogans, right? And we go, we get there, and we have a very tense discussion with the Salarians. And we're like, why did you do this horrible thing? And it doesn't go anywhere, and diplomatically it's challenging. But they're like, hey, we do have one Krogan female. And we're like, one? You should have, like, 20, right? The report was that you had, like, what happened to the rest of them? And they're like, well, they kind of died in the experimentation. And you're like, what? You know, this is really bad, man. Like, you know. So, uh, but we're like, okay, we're picking up Eve. That was her name, the Krogan female. And we're going to take her from the Solarian planet back to the Citadel. Well, Cerberus agents, those are the uh, human supremacists, right, um, come down onto the Solarian planet and there's a big combat and we, they have hardened uh, armor uh, troops, they have sentinels, and they have some like ninja-like characters and we had to fight all of them. We fought all of them, we defeated them, and then we took Eve back to the Citadel. And that was the events that happened in Season 1, Episode 2. It was a fantastic game. I'm super hyped about this game. Gabriel is really crushing it. Um, and I love... Thank you for letting me share you share with you. I'd love to hear about if you've ever run um, Mass Effect as, an, as a tabletop role-playing game. Also, if you've played Mass Effect as a video game, you know, like, what was your path through that? How did you like it? Do you think that my uh, complaining about the races is accurate, or I'm just not understanding? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider, like, subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.